time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. And welcome back to Cigar Talk. How you guys doing today? Oh, shit. We got jerkins up there. That's not what I meant to do. We did away with jerkins. <laughs> No longer a sponsor. Uh, yeah, you know, they had their run. <laughs> yes. They, they had, they, I guess you'd say they ran their course. It was a smooth run. It was a smooth run. But anyway, hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. We've got a great show lined up for you. Uh, I'm your host, Rob Jones. We got Larry, Big Larry in the co-pilot seat. Welcome back, bro. Hello, everybody. Thanks, man. Hey, man. man well, it's so good to be back. Dude, I mean, it was like you were gone for a while. Yeah. Whoa, two weeks? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so two weeks. I want to just take weeks. a little opportunity to just, you know. <laughs> Welcome back. There you go, baby. Welcome yeah, back. Man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we missed you. We missed you. I missed you. All Glad too. you had a good trip. I did. You went up to Baltimore. Saw your mother. Went to Baltimore. Went to ninety-seven. My mom. Yeah, she's not. She'll be ninety-eight in July. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It was a really good trip. Uh, caught up with an old friend of mine in Pennsylvania. Hadn't seen in a while. Did y'all so, do anything uh, illegal? No. Okay. No, because you got we're, a cutter on you. We'll be on cutter for you. Lives. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh so when you went up to Baltimore from Texas, like, what was your route? Mm. Like, how do you get to Baltimore? 20? you take a left turn at Albuquerque? <laughs> no, that'd, go, that'd be going west. <laughs> no, uh, I took 20 to 30 to 40 to 81. And 40 cuts across, uh, like in, what, Oklahoma? Yeah, but I went up to, uh, I went up into, I, I, I hit 40, I, I went up into Arkansas. Oh, gotcha, so I went gotcha. up, went up oh, to Texas, that's such Arcana, a pretty part of the country, dude. Yeah, yeah. The northern part. Mm-hmm. Of Arkansas and into Missouri, yeah, and then Ooh. yeah, and so then I went up, uh, went up forty to, uh, and then I hit, um, went went through went through Memphis, Nashville, Knoxville, into Virginia. And was it still too cold, or was like the was Ozarks cold. starting to come out? Like it was, it was chilly. It was it was no, but I mean chilly. like the greenery. Was it out yet? Yeah, it was. It was getting there. Getting, yeah, yeah. So while you were gone, there. man, Abilene exploded. Wow. We had a couple of uh, rainy days. Mm-hmm. And I mean, everything at, right after that, we had summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boom. It was crazy. That was over today. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, let's talk about what we're going to have on the show this week. We're going to talk about some uh, unique pairings. All right. The art of pairing cigars with not just bourbon. That's right. You There's can. lots of cool stuff to pair with sure like that really will blow out of the park what you think that you could pair something with. And it's not all, it's not all, it's not all alcohol. Oh, no, either. no. A lot of them's not alcohol. We do like the bourbon. I mean, though. we, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> uh, we're also going to revisit cigar etiquette. All right. You know, there's a lot of guys I see coming in the lounge that, and here's the thing. You can't get pissed. They don't know what they don't know. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? That's right. I mean, you get a little pissed when you got a guy that's been smoking for five years that stomps out a twenty-two dollar cigar in the ashtray, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or licks on licks on the end of a cigar and then uses a shop cutter. Oh yeah, that's always a classic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get into that, and uh, then we will be talking about exploring rare and limited cigars. All right. I mean, are they worth the hype? Are they worth the money? Because some of those cigars get pretty pricey. They do. They do. And I know I've had my fair share. Some of them I really enjoyed, and some of them I was like, wow, I got taken. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about that, too. And, of course, we will have this week's Showcase 6. All right. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to change the name of that one last time to the Showcase Showdown, like me against you. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. Or whoever else is in this chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that's what the show's got lined up, guys. Let's tell everybody what we're smoking right now. We'll start with Larry. I am finishing up this delicious Rocky Patel Edge Maduro. Mm, This mm. is a Toro, and it was great. Not a torpedo. No, not a torpedo. That's you know every time I get one of those it's always the torpedo. Yeah, have I, you smoked the torpedoes? I have. I don't. I don't smoke a lot of torpedoes. Which, I don't know why. I just. I just don't really enjoy torpedoes. I mean, you they prefer taste fine. circumcised. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
All right. <laughs> you don't want that foreskin. Okay. Sorry, sorry. All right. What's, no, what's next? <laughs> uh, I am smoking the uh, Madre Tierra Habano. This was sent to us uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I've been smoking. This is the last one. I've, I've been, you know, I didn't smoke through them every day. Mm-hmm. It was like I'd smoke one, take two or three days off, smoke mm-hmm. another one. Yeah. And so this is the last one. And I got to say, overall, I've enjoyed the hell out of them. Oh, good. And so this is the last one. And, you know, the construction has been really good on every one of each them. And, each and every one. Each and every one. Quality control, baby. That, Quality that's a big deal. And they're, and they're a new company. That's Like great. brand new. All right. We're going to have the owner on the show mm-hmm. in the very near future, but I just want to say thank you for sending us these cigars, and it's been a nice little, like, something I'm not used to. All right. And you know, I love trying new stuff. Nice to branch out. And I'm pairing it tonight with the small batch 1792. Last week we were doing the, uh, what was it? The foolproof 1792. But I'm glad I missed that. Small one. batch is here and uh, can't beat it. Mm. I mean, these this right here, 1792 and Elijah Craig, mm-hmm. small batch, both of them. Okay. Can't beat it. Yeah. Like a sore pecker. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah you're, Good bourbons. You're not going to beat that. Good choice. Good choices there. What are you drinking? I'm drinking some of the uh, Benchmark Top Floor. Mm. You know, this has become my go-to bourbon. Got it from my friends. That's because uh, you're trying to cut back and you like that 86 proof. I do. I do. Plus, I like that price point. Oh, well, you can't beat that either. Talk wrong. about sore pecker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and uh, got that from, uh, from our friends at uh, Best Price Liquors at North Six and Willis here in Abilene. Yeah, if you get a chance to go by North Sixth, by Best North Price and Willis, Liquor, yes, yes, they got great prices. They sure do. That like, and it's not even close. That's why they're called Best Price. I think. Like, I went over to uh, was that Lone Star, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm not going to pay ten dollars yeah. more yeah. for a bottle that over here is forty seven. Mm-hmm. Why would I pay fifty seven? Well, maybe you just had twenty dollars. That's a twenty percent increase. Get away with. Yeah, twenty percent's too much. Yeah, that yeah. Ten percent, I can swallow yeah, that, that but mm-mm, not doing twenty. Yeah, no, no. I like to. I I like to save. I, I like to. Say, Sam's having trouble over there. I like to. Uh, I don't like to give out my money unnecessarily. You know, so no, because every dime I give out extra. Mm-hmm. Is a little less bourbon I can buy. That's right. One less cigar that's, stick I that's can right. buy. That's right. That's right. And I mean, you know, we smoke a lot. We smoke a lot. Yeah. So we want to we want to support those places that that recognize that we have limited budgets. Yeah. And they working, want to take care of us. Well, I was gonna say we're working men. Wow. Well, I'm a working man. Oh right. Yeah. It'll be okay. But anyway. Uh, hey, before we jump into everything, let me get my notes here. Uh, let's talk about uh, Macau cigars. Let's talk. Like about I am so. Ch- you know, we got some Macau Black coming. Oh, thank like you. I have been. Whoa, thank you. Yeah, Macau Black. Of course, you know we always got the Macau uh, Medallia coming. That's just the standard. Yes. Like I don't even have to tell them yeah. that. So, they, they know. <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to Rob. Got to be. Got to yeah. be some medallions in there. So Thank if you, you ever tried them out, check them out, man. They've got a budget for everyone. They, they got do. a cigar for every palate. Yes, they do. They do. And that Macau. And they're black. budget friendly. Yes, they are. They are. I mean, Cigar Authority named Macau of Black Cigar of the Year, and it's an $8 stick. Cannot go wrong with I that. I mean, you you got to give props to Dave over at uh, the Cigar Authority, that yeah. dude's been in the business for a long time. He don't bullshit. That's right. That's right. Dave keeps it real. He does. I, I like that dude. He yeah. he's a uh, he's a Yankee though. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Eh, that's that's okay. I I'm just messing with you. I like Dave. You know what? I respect him. He he's a trailblazer. He's a pioneer. He's the OG when it comes to cigar podcasting. Yes. Yes, you've talked you know, about some that. people would say, uh, "Well, what about Cigar Dave?" And I'm like, "Well, Cigar Dave was on the radio, mm-hmm. and that dude was a dick." <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing, I, I, and I, I'm just joking. I, I don't know Dave or Cigar Dave, uh, but his show was not really about 
cigars. cigars. Mm-hmm. It was it was mainly politics. Oh, and you know, I don't give yeah, a shit about yeah, that stuff. Yeah, no. But because he smoked a cigar mm-hmm. or two during the show, and his show's like three or four hours, I'm like... Eh. Oh, oh, only a cigar or two in three or four hours? Well, I don't... I just, he's a lightweight. Yeah, yeah. But he's a showboater, okay. you know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, hats off to that dude, too. But it's not my vibe. I'm not a political man. That's right. Uh, you know, if anybody asks me about politics, I'm like, kill them all. <laughs> Let God sort Let, them out. Let's start over. Oh, yeah. yeah. Start over. <laughs> I mean... The two people running for office this year, just all like, right, right. what are what are they? A hundred and fifty-seven years old combined. All right, let's get off politics. I'm just saying yeah, that's yeah. the best we can do. Well, it's it's what we've done. You should have run. No, I no, would have no. voted for you. No, no, no. Sam could have run. I would have voted for him. I, I'd, I'd I'd vote for Sam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think we could do better, folks. Quit. Quit getting sucked in by all the media BS. There's got to be somebody out there that okay. is under 70. I mean, do we want Ed being president? No. Think, they're both older than Ed. I'm really it in, I see Rob. it, I see it but it just kind of chaps yeah, me then. I know. Okay. All right. 77 and 80. <sighs> like, dude. And not that I discriminate against gay, against old people, but I Thank have you. friends that are old people, and I'm like, no, <laughs> those people should not be president. Yeah. Ed can't remember where he left his hearing aids. <laughs> we love Ed. I have his bottle of water in my truck. <laughs> well, he left it when I took him home this exactly. afternoon. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, we we'll love keep you. Ed, moving on listen. about that. Hey guys, uh, next sponsor up is Rabbit Air. Mm. You don't see any smoke in here, do you? No, because the rabbit and it's and the rabbit air is on low, people. It's on, it's on low. You can't hear it. You can see it if yeah. you look up there, but you can't see no smoke. No, no, not them. You, <laughs> you can see it. I do see it. Yeah. You know what I did today? Uh, you asked me what I was doing because you were late, and uh, I took that down and I actually cleaned out all the filter sections. All right. There's four different filters in. Oh there. man. There's like the first, well, it's actually five. It's got that metal, real fine mesh screen. Mm-hmm. And then it's got like, you remember the old stuff that the uh, air conditioners had that like the water ran down through? Yeah. It has something like that, but it's real thin. Okay. And then there's a charcoal screen. All right. And then there's a big, wide HEPA filter medical grade. Mm-hmm. So you have five layers. They've done their homework. Yeah. And I, I cleaned out the dirt, and it said, oh, thank you. <laughs> I think they had a couple of rabbit babies. <laughs> but uh, anyway, hey, uh, let's jump into the art of pairing. Let's talk about it. So one of the things that I love pairing with is coffee. Like, there are so many options. Yeah. And the thing about it is, now I'm kind of, are you are you you're particular about your coffee, aren't you? Like, what kind of blend do you like, or do you care? Yeah, so I've been drinking mostly uh, H E B coffee, mm-hmm. uh, which is for those of coffee? you who are not in hey, Texas. H E B has some good coffee. Yeah, yeah, and for those of you not in Texas, H E B is uh, is one of the big grocery store chains, and it's headquartered here in Texas. I drink a lot of H E B coffee. I and like they the- kind of cater to minorities, don't they? In some areas, it seems that way. But I mean, well, maybe not cater. No, no, no. But they I have, love, they have, I love, they have big support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what I mean by that is what I love going in there is I get all the minority type food mm-hmm. more so than, say, if I go to United. Right. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Like the selection of your tacos, meat, your yeah. chicken, fajitas, all that stuff mm-hmm. is way better yes. over at HEB. Yeah, it is. It and is. I mean, it's not just for the minority type food. It's also, I mean, like their seafood. Yes. Way better. Yeah. Yeah, they got great seafood, uh, but they have uh, the my two favorites from H E B. Uh, they have ones called Houston Blend, and then they have another one called Taste of San Antonio. What the what the hell is Houston Blend? Some coffee. They so they have coffee that you drink uh, it and it shoots you. <laughs> <laughs> they they have coffee from from different areas of the state. They have a, there's the Houston Blend. There's the Taste of San Antonio. Those are my two favorites. There's a Taste of Austin. There's a Taste of Abilene. Are you serious? Yes, there is. That's pretty good too. There's a hub. Probably tastes like God. (laughs) 
They have a, <clears throat> there's one called Taste of the Hill Country, and they have a Hub City blend. Ooh. So you know what that's all about, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Lubbock. A little Lubbockian yes, coffee. Sir. Yes, yes. It probably tastes like ass. Yeah, I've never had that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dirt. <laughs> red dirt. Mm-hmm. That's really, when you live in Lubbock, you taste red dirt often because the wind's blowing 50 and there's just dirt. If the wind blows hard enough, you get some of it here in Abilene too. Yeah, that's for sure. You got that cutter over there still? Uh, I think I do, but oh, there there it is. I was a little Easter egg hunt. Thank you. Thank you. you. But think about it. For me, I'm kind of a coffee snob. Yes. And it's not like I never intended to be that. And I don't even see it as being a snob. No, that's what I, I was just say. like really good coffee. Yeah, that's what I was and saying. I once would, you yeah. get used to really good coffee, you don't want to drink garbage. Like I will not go into a convenience store and buy coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just not doing it. Yeah. If I'm desperate, normally, like if I'm on the road, um, but no, um, it's like, again, it's not being a snob. It's just liking good coffee. You know, not drinking trash. And and here in Abilene, the best coffee in town is at the Leaf. Yes. A hundred percent. Like not even close. There's not a doubt. There's no doubt. Where'd you get that big sky? You gave it to me before. I Very left. nice. Yeah. I want to know how you like that. Yeah, I'm going to let you know. I here liked in a everything they sent mm-hmm. us. I was a big fan. Ooh. Rich. I, I mean, I didn't even smoke. Yeah. It. Oh, well, I passed it on over. No, uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, that's. Uh, but like for me, when I smoke a bold cigar, and I'll give you an example, like my father, mm-hmm. Lee Bijou. Like, I'm going to pair that with a bold coffee, mm-hmm. like straight up uh, dark roast Colombian. There you go. Now, the Kenya AA, I'm not a fan. Have you ever tried that one? Uh, I have. It's very acidic. I mean, it is bold, mm-hmm. but it's a little too exi- exi- acidic, acidic for me. And so, like, uh, you know, thick, he loves that Kenya AA. Yeah. And, but like, I really enjoy the Brazilian dark roast, mm-hmm. the Costa Rican. Like the Costa Rican, though, it's a dark roast, but man, it pairs so well with a medium cigar that has a little sweetness to it, or a good, like dark Maduro that's mm-hmm. not strong, but it has that sweetness from the sugar fermenting and aging on the wrapper. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You ever get one of those? Yeah. It's so good. But, I mean, like, all the coffees I'm a big fan of, except for the Kenya A. And what's that Peabody coffee? You know what I'm talking about, Sam? It's something. Anyway, it's not Peabody. That's not even close, but you should get the idea from that. It's like some coffee that is like, when they tell you the name of it, you're like, I have no idea where that is. He doesn't know. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, let's jump to the next one. You guys kind of experienced this one. Yes, we did. This weekend. So I wasn't able to make it uh, due to that I was working, Mm -hmm. but you guys had a bourbon tasting this weekend. Rum tasting. Oh, sorry. (laughs) We're doing the bourbon tasting. (laughs) Uh, Every show. How how was that? Man, that was an experience. It was good. How many different rums did you try? We have, Sam, we had eight rums. Nine. Who? Nine. Nine different rums. Did you try them all? I, I did. I did. And how much are you sipping when you try one? Just literally. I mean, so you pour this much? No. No. Okay. No, not, Half even, not that? even that much. Yeah, about, Half that. about three quarters of that. About three okay. quarters of that. Yeah. Um, because. So, so you're pouring about a finger. Not. Yeah, almost a finger. So we, I, my fingers are bigger. Um, but you know, you got to keep in mind, we had nine of them to try. Right. And That's then a lot we, of bourbon. Then we all had places to go That's after. That's, That's a, lot a lot of rum. Of rum. Yeah. Yeah. So which was your favorite? Uh, you know, I can't narrow it down. Uh, I had, there were three or four that I okay, really give me your enjoyed. Top three. My top three, I'd say, would be the, there was one called Pilar, which is a, not a white rum, not a dark rum. It's, they call it a blonde rum. Had, had a little bit of color to it, and that was based on something. Did it from, act real dumb? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. This was. Or did you act dumb after drinking it? <laughs> you want to step outside? Uh, no, it was it was it was unique. Uh, it had a lot of flavor, very complex, 
Um, I can't even really tell you what we tasted. It was not, it was not sweet, it was not sweet at all. Almost had kind of an aromatic, you would say, Sam, kind of an aromatic taste to it almost, uh, but not like, not like the aromatic, the aromatic flavor you get from gin. Oh, yeah, I know. And it was, man, it was, inc- it was incredibly smooth. So this was based on uh, something about Ernest Hemingway and the different ports that he visited. And this rum was kind of based on that. So it had a little bit from all these different ports in it. Uh, you know, so port like it, like a water, like say, a seaport. Would you say it was complex? Yes, yes, multiple very. notes. Yes, okay, yes, and man, it was so good. So, uh, Do you remember the proof on that one? It was Probably somewhere 80. I'd say between eighty to eighty six. Okay, most of them. I think we had one that was hundred proof. We'll we'll talk about that, and then we'll. That's never the one Ed again. brought. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "I ain't gonna be there. Y'all try this shit." <laughs> This tastes like ass. You know, now I'll try it. it. He might. <laughs> you know, There's a reason he wasn't there. <laughs> Ed brings yeah. good stuff yeah. and he drinks with you, but yes. when he sends stuff, <laughs> yeah, stay away from it. Yeah. So, yeah. what was yeah, another was one of your favorite. favorites? So, the PLR was good. And then, uh, and what were you smoking uh, while you were trying all these rums? Did you, smoke. did you, did you select a general type cigar that will pair with many things or like, I'm pretty sure I had a Maduro, but I can't remember which was one. Was it the Flathead 660? It was not. It, See, I think, no, you know what? It was, thank you, it was the 554. Okay, because I think that blend mm-hmm, mm-hmm. would be a very good cigar blend to pair with multiple different flavor profiles of rum. Yes. Because it's got that sweet wrapper, mm-hmm. not sweet like injected with sweetness, yeah. mm-hmm. but just a... A little bit of sugar on mm-hmm. it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a sugar tit. Yeah. And uh, hey, would you hit the button over there, please? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd be glad to. Boom. Get it? Yes. And so th- I think that's a great cigar to yeah. pair with mm-hmm. different rums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was number three. Did I say two already? I don't know. No, I didn't. So <laughs> we had to get past the pillar. Speed the hell up. You interrupted me. You interrupted me again. Uh, so uh, that was the, so the Pilar was would, would be one of mine, and then the the other one I'd say was the uh, Sam bought uh, the Florida Kanya, uh eighteen year old. Okay, and that was a that was an excellent rum, excellent rum. Incredibly Florida Kanya is a good rum. They are. I think I've had the twelve, very good. Yeah. I've had the seven year. They have a seven year old Grand Reserve, which I've had, and then this eighteen year old is the only. I've, I've they have a four year old that I had too. I thought it was awful. But the seven-year-old was very good. I go around telling sipping, people about sipping that. Sipping rum—that's a good point. And the eighteen-year-old was uh, was very good. And then I picked up a bottle when I was when I was in Baltimore. I picked up a bottle of Appleton Estate. It's a Jamaican rum. How don't, was that? I don't know anything about. It. I didn't know anything about it. I'd never had it before. It was great. Incredibly smooth. Had a really really clean taste to it. Um, it was kind of an amber color, but man, it was good. And everybody, everybody really enjoyed it too. Nice. I think everybody enjoyed Where'd the Grand Reserve. At? Uh, at Total Wine in Baltimore. Oh, wow. Yep. yep. Brought it back. Yeah, brought it sure back that's with legal? me. Well, um, hope so. <laughs> and then also, um, Presley had, cause he brought, Presley brought a lot of rum with him. Thank you, Presley. Um, Presley's a connoisseur he is, of though. spirits. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Across the board, he is. And he's like, not. A, and he's not a big drinker either. He's not a big drinker, but he likes to try different things. And he likes to share. Yes, he does. Yes, he sure does. Those are our favorite kind of people, yes. folks. Yeah. Unlike some other people we know, going to remain nameless. He had a Rich. Bacardi, a, a Bacardi ten year old, mm-hmm. and it was. Did it have any color to it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. you know all the other Bacardis all clear. No, you know, well, no, well, they're not like the well, cheap ones. Yeah, the yeah. regular Bacardi, like, the Bacardi you call the entry level one, entry level the one fifty one's not clear either. It's got an amber color to it. I've had the I've had one that's clear. I've never seen that before. I think it's called one fifty one silver. Hmm. Okay, I have not seen that because I'm not a big rum. I made that up, I, yes. but <laughs> I not, but not I remember so. one being. It sounded clear. convincible. So the Bacardi Silver that that's what I'd call their entry level rum. Mm-hmm. Bacardi, it, you know, we most people refer to that as white rum, but yeah, they they call it silver, and that's what yeah people drink that with rum and coke. You know, somebody's gonna have a rum and coke. That's that's what they that's what they drink. That's what they make it rum and coke. Now, with. do you know what they make rum from? Sugar cane. Yeah, in a roundabout way, but that's not really where it comes from. Okay. Molasses. Mm. Bootstrap molasses. 
It's dark. It's thick. Okay. I watched a two-hour video on how to make rum this week, mm. and I almost decided I was going to try to make it. And the first half, I'm like, I got that shit. I'm going to do it. And then they got to the second half, and I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much the distillery part yeah. mm-hmm. i'm like you the dudes this do, using a distillery apparatus that's like eight thousand dollars okay i'm like yeah i'm out yeah <laughs> i don't like rum that much <laughs> it was a good time i'm sorry you couldn't make it uh, yeah it was we, we you know really what's funny time. is i bought that bottle of uh dominicana uh-huh. or whatever it's called and uh D- diplomatico diplomatico and so I had a glass of that the night before, and it was okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not like chomping at the bits to have some more of it. To knock your socks off. Yeah. You really but wear socks. at the same time, I don't really enjoy what rum does to me. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> most people had that problem on Saturday. Like, bourbon is just like straightforward yes mm-hmm. rum likes to circle around behind you and club you in the back of the head <laughs> like you didn't see it coming you know what i mean yes yes, yes and yes. so dude even just off of drinking one i was like "Ooh, <laughs> i feel a little different i think i'll take a nap yeah. yeah and so i've had a little bit of rum here and there mm-hmm. but i've never had mm-hmm. enough that like i ever got like well i guess you would say a buzz mm-hmm and what I learned is the buzz is a lot different than bourbon. Yeah. Well, we all learned that on bourbon on- makes me funny. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think so. <laughs> You're the yeah. only one in this room that feels that way. That's because Sam left. Yeah. <laughs> no, the uh, you know we <clears throat> last month we did a tequila tasting, mm-hmm. and it was very enjoyable. A uh, lot of different tequilas and mezcals, uh, and that was quite an experience. But the rum, the rum hit did everybody. Did the Moscow have a worm in it? No, it did not. Okay. Because, you know, Presley brought one that did have yeah. a worm in it, and I drank that. Mm-hmm. Not the worm. Okay. But booze that had a bug in it. Yeah. You know, years ago, uh, when I was in San Angelo, a friend of mine had invited me over for Thanksgiving dinner, and I got there, and he was passed out on his living room floor. When I left, he was passed out on the living room floor. Was when he I w- passed out when you got there? Yes. And when I left and when I went back the next day, he was still on the living room floor. I don't think he had moved. They check every now and then, make sure he was still breathing. Uh, he had ate the worm. Mm. And I'm told that. that Orally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not anally. Yeah. And I'm told that <laughs> the worm, I've t- some people have told me the worm would ha- can have that effect on folks. Really? I've, mm-hmm. I've never heard that. Yeah. Hey, so. Uh, all right, let's jump into uh, a couple of other things with pairings. Yes. So also, don't just think about like coffee or bourbon or rum or other spirits. You can also do things like chocolate. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, that's a really good pairing with certain mm-hmm. cigars. And for some reason, I just think of the, uh, I've got to think for a minute, it's a Saka cigar. It's the... Uh, one with the Irish cross. What's that one called? I'll circle back around. It's but called anyway. the one with the Irish cross. No, I no, think that's what it's, no. it's called the Mi Sempromiso. Okay. And that has a really delicate, like, chocolate profile to it. Mm-hmm. You have yourself some either dark chocolate or some semi-sweet chocolate. And it like, wow. Uh, really? Yes. And then another one that I really enjoy is a medium plus spicy cigar, earthy cigar, leather cigar with a root beer. Mm, mm-hmm. That's a great pairing. Mm-hmm. And then also, I'll tell you this, uh, you give me a really stout cigar, give me a little piece of licorice. Wow. Because, you know, the real licorice, yeah. not the twizzlers <laughs> not that syrup they that's freeze. where i thought you were going no 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 real it's i mean have you ever had real licorice i guess i have not oh maybe i haven't like you've seen twizzlers yes I it's have. shiny yeah no real licorice is like not shiny at all mm-hmm. and when you break it, it it doesn't like tear cleanly it like tears in pieces mm-hmm. and it's like very jerky 
almost like that, but it's very earthy. Okay. Root. Mm, okay. Like the that's root. where they get it. Yeah. It's a licorice. Mm-hmm. It's a root. <clears throat> And so that's Anna, a really anus. good pairing. Anus. A- anus. A N I S E. Not anus. Right. Anus. Yeah, anus. Good, good, good. So when you have a cigar and you want to try to, to experiment with your palate, highly recommend trying some different yes. pairings. And I mean, there's a million outside of what we just talked mm-hmm. about. Uh, you know, I remember a few years back, we were at a little get together and Ed showed up with Doers 21. And I was drinking it out of a solo cup because, you know, that's how I roll. Yes, I'm yes, classy. Yes. And uh, not. So I had a little pour of that and it was in my solo cup and I'm swirling it around. I'm smelling it. And I'm like, I recognize that smell. But I can't put my finger on it, but I knew it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I took a sip, and I was like, yeah, there it is again. What is that? I know it. And then all of a sudden, it hit me. Chocolate-covered cherries. Ooh. And I was like, now that would be something to pair some chocolate with. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And so I'm not a scotch guy. Yeah. And you know what? You know Dewar's is actually uh who's the rum uh that you said a while ago the 151 who makes that uh, ron bacardi 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 mm-hmm. owns doers oh i think yeah you know what i think i knew that and i'm like i, think I remember reading so that. really it's not even a scotch <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i mean technically it is but i'm like you can't have bacardi owning a scotch that's just not even right. That's why they. That's why they didn't put their name on it. But there's a heritage there, and I'm. I'm sure it's still distilled the same place. I and enjoyed they, it. Hopefully, they still. I really, use I really the same did recipe. enjoy it. And since then, I've really turned my nose up at Scotch in general. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. Once I became like bourbon, bourbon drunk. <laughs> I'm like, eh, I don't want no Scotch. This does me just fine. But uh, no, I just don't care for the Scotch. It's it's a it is a completely different. Now here's something interesting: the Japanese on their bourbons, mm-hmm. whiskeys, 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 they do something completely different to take away that peat, and they actually do some black magic stuff, mm-hmm. and it makes it like no longer have that twang that scotch has Mm -hmm. and they do it on purpose yeah but i just heard that last week and i can't remember the details so i probably should have brought it up but i did i'll have to research because now i'm interested so i'll have to research that a little bit and see if there's anything i can find out um one of the other things that people have talked about uh and a friend of mine amber um has talked about when because she's not a whiskey drinker um but somebody told her one time you should try it with wine so I think that uh, Rick, try what with wine cigars with wine. You know, Sean can do that. Yes, Sean mm-hmm. O'Connor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hello, Sean. But Sean is a like sommelier, whatever you call it, of spirits. Yeah. Sean's an expert on and cigars. Yeah, and food. And when 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 Sean puts his mind that he likes something. Mm-hmm. He's going to become an expert. He's going to go all in. A hundred percent. Yeah, we love that. And then whenever and whenever we have a chance to talk to Sean, he educates us. He educates us, too. He tells us some things that we didn't know before. Uh, some things he tells us, some things that we probably would never have thought of if we weren't talking to him. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, it's great. But um, now, and, are you? Let me break in here. Are you in the Discord, the new Discord? I am not. Okay. I have, we have a new invited. Discord, guys. Yes, you have. I sent you a link yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I've been invited. But anyway, I should check. Look down in the show email. notes. We scrapped the old cigar talk Discord. It was just too old, too much fat. Are you talking about me now? No. Okay, thank you. But we had a lot of people that were members of the old Discord that never got on. Mm-hmm. And if you're never going to get on, don't come in here in the first place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just if you don't want to participate, don't. Yeah. You're not making me happy by joining and then never coming back. Mm-hmm. 
So if you want to be part of the community, we would love to have you. But be an active and, and, and contributing yeah, and you member. Don't, to and you don't have to come by every day, every minute of the day. Check just, us out from time to time. If you're in two or three times a week just to say, hey, this is what I've been smoking, we'd love to see what other people are smoking. Yes, yes we do. So we get that gives us great ideas. It really does. Gives us things to, oh, we should check that out. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, hey, you know what? Before we go on to our next subject, which is going to be Cigar Etiquette 101, we're going to take a quick break, guys. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for hanging through the break. Uh, since then, I have lit up a Nestor Miranda, Ooh, the special yes. Selection. Did I get one of those? I don't know if you did or not. Think, oh no, that's the one Sam left you. Yeah. Well, no. he did, he didn't leave it well, for me. Well, he left it. He left, and it was on the table. Hey. And I was like, oh, possession thanks. is nine tenths of the law. Boom. You now possess that. I do. I'm and smoking. Sam's it. gone. And I got a nice burn going here. Yes, you look at do. that ash, look dude. That. These ashes have been like lights out. Mm -hmm. Did you see mm -hmm. Sam's original ash was like that long? Yeah. Wow. Anyway, guys, hey, uh, let's jump in right quick. Uh, let's talk about artisanal tobacco. Oh, yes. El Popo. Let's talk about the Viva El La Vida. Popo. And Viva did you see that they have a new cigar? I don't believe I did. I, maybe new is not the right word. It is the Viva La Vida five-year anniversary limited edition. No, I have not seen that. Right? Ooh. So we don't have any of those. We're going to try to get Shucks. our hands on some of those. Let's do it. Because I can only imagine how good that is. Hey, and so you guys know, uh, we didn't do a live last week because our guest was sick, and we weren't going to do a live this week, and so... Next week, we're going to do a live, and then on the 31st, we're doing a live, and our guest on the 31st is Billy. 31st from of when? April. There's only 30 days in April. Okay, well, close enough. Okay. I'm just, 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 want to on throw, the just 30th, want to throw that out there. <laughs> Tuesday the 30th, I believe it is, and anyway, Billy's going to be on, and I can't wait to talk to him about the five-year anniversary stick. I'm checking that. Like, I'm, I'm excited about that. It'll be good. So anyway, if you haven't smoked the El Popo, that's my number one cigar of the year last year, and it's made the top 10 Maduro list of this year, and everybody that smoked it around here has loved it. Yes, we did. We so, did. So anyway, let's jump into the Cigar Etiquette 101. Let's do it. And here's the thing, guys. Don't skip ahead. You think, oh, I've been smoking for five years. I don't need to hear this bullshit. You yeah, you're the it. people that, like, need to hear it the most. Sometimes we all need a reminder. That's true. So first, right out the gate, this is a big one for me. Respect other people's personal space. Yes. Now, there's so many things that go into that. Oh, yeah. But mainly for me, be conscious of where you're blowing your smoke. Yeah. Like, it really gets my tail feathers up in a dander when somebody just puffs their smoke and it's just coming right at me. Yeah. Like that takes away from my enjoyment. Yeah, I can see that. And you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, like if you were in a lounge that has smoke eaters, mm -hmm. there's going to be a draft in a certain direction. Yeah. Look and see where, when you blow, where it goes. So you're aware of it. Yeah. So many people just sit there and, puff 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 and they don't see where their smoke's going and it's like i want to knock the shit out of you <laughs> so anyway that that that's my biggest one on personal space i feel fortunate that i've never seen your tail feathers who yeah yeah some people have though hey, that's yeah. my brother russell <laughs> they're in, uh they're in therapy and you know a big part of that is try to avoid smoking cigars in a confined area Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like we've never had that problem with the studios. Mm -hmm. Even the old studio, we had pretty good yeah. air purification. Yeah. We had an air ventilation system. Mm -hmm. The studio here has the rabbit air. The rabbit air. And so. It's exquisite. Now, the funny thing is, you think about this, 
if you're the only one smoking cigars and there's four or five people in your car, mm-hmm. if you smoke, you're being a dick. Yeah. Now, I've been the dick. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but I'll say, you know what? I grew up with my dad smoking cigarettes in the 70s, yeah. and the window was cracked about a 32nd of an yeah. inch. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, can you roll down the window? And he's like, it is cracked. <laughs> and I mean, he's holding it right there, and you can see like half of the smoke going out the window and half, half coming in the back, back seat. Yeah. 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 I was like, I can't breathe. It was a 1974 Buick Electra. Hmm. Four door long, like what, 24 one of the feet big long? Ones. Something like that, yeah. I Those, mean, they had a 127 inch wheelbase. <laughs> We, they were built on the same wheelbase as the uh, Cadillac DeVille series. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, but, yeah, back in the day, the Electra and the old um, and the Oldsmobile uh, ninety eight. So we used to lay up in the back window. Yeah. We used to take mm-hmm. pillows and put them in the floorboard, and make that a bed. I mean, dude, we had three beds in the back. Yeah, yeah those were big. They were like caverns. Not only were they long, they were wide. wide. Yes, yes, they were six passenger cars. Uh, but you could easily get seven, maybe eight people on them. If you had kids? Yeah. Oh, they were like 10. I mean, we didn't need seatbelts back <laughs> <Yeah>. then. <laughs> Everybody was just wedged in. Yeah. I mean, nobody wore seat backs at, mm. seat belts in the 70s. Do you? Did you? I think I usually did. That's because you're weird. Yes, 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 yes. We, and I wanted to stay alive. We did not wear because we don't need them. Yeah. We were like, well, y'all are, y'all, y'all were wedged in like sardines. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. I remember in like 19, let's see, what was it? 1978, 79, my brother Corey was four. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I'm sorry. He was two. So that would have made him, it would have been 1977. But, you know, I told you every summer we would drive up to Canada. Yeah. And I mean, dude, driving from Sweetwater, Texas to Canada, that's a drive. That's a drive. That's a drive. And we would always go through Colorado up into uh, what's the big park up Yosemite? Uh-huh. Is that the park? No, no, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. And so we would go to Yellowstone, and one day we parked that big ass Buick like on this road or right up to the edge of where this parking lot was. Well, where we parked, there was no like railroad cross tie keeping the car where it was. Ooh. And so we, me, my mother, my dad, and my grandmother were all at the back with the trunk open getting stuff for sandwiches because mm-hmm. we were poor. And all of a sudden, and the car's still That's running. The, the car's running. My little brother, who's two, <laughs> had shifted into gear. And it starts going forward, and look, dude, it is like this, and then down to the river. Oh my gosh! And there's like eight or nine dudes jumping in front of the car, trying to push it from rolling. And that was a big car too. That's oh. a big heavy car. Yeah, what was that like eight thousand pounds? Uh, crazy. And anyway, I thought he was going to be a goner. Mm-hmm. They stopped him. Well, actually, my dad jumped in the car, yeah. slammed on the brake, yeah. threw it in park. park yeah. But otherwise, it was gone. The, the guys pushing, <laughs> they were going in the river too. <laughs> there was there was no stopping it with their Hulk yeah. physiques. Yeah. My dad had a seventy five LeSabre. wasn't oh. quite that big, but almost. And yeah, heck of a car, heck of a car. So that was the family car. Yeah, my dad's car at that time, and this is probably seventy seven. Mm-hmm. Was a 1972 Grand Prix. Oh, oh man, those were nice. White on white. Oh, those. Oh, remember the. And oh do, yes. Do you remember that the seat? Yeah. The sw- oh, they had the swivel, the swivel seat, the swivel, swivel bucket to go out. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I remember my dad kept that car. Like when we got new cars, he yeah. was like, "Yeah, we're not yeah. getting rid yeah. of that one. That's a great that car." One. That was my favorite Grand Prix. It's a good looking car. Yes, yes. And the wheels, those Pontiacs. Yes, mm. yes. But uh, one night I was, a, I think I was a senior. So this has been 1987. My dad still had that car. And I was grounded. You know, I was grounded a lot. And uh, <laughs> imagine that. But I was a photographer for the high school. So for the newspaper. And so it was like a Thursday night. I told my mom, I was like, hey, 
I got to go take pictures of, uh, no, it was Friday night because we played on Saturday night. And I said, uh, we're playing Carnata this week, our big rival. That's where Tim went to school. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I was like, I got to go out and take pictures. People are decorating with streamers and all this shit. You know, my dad worked for the railroad. Mm-hmm. He got home about two in the morning. He comes in and he's like, where's my car? <laughs> And my mom says, oh, Robbie had to go take pictures for something. And he goes, Robbie, are you fucking for real? He don't need to go take pictures at two in the morning. <laughs> you know, my mom was pretty gullible. So my dad at that time, his work vehicle was a like a 82 Datsun pickup. <laughs> and so he comes and he sees me. I'm coming towards Indiana at Lubbock, and instead of stopping at the light, I just cut through the parking lot of uh, 7-Eleven doing like 40, you know, got on Indiana. I'm cruising down. I'm doing like 80. Yeah. Anyway, my dad can't catch us in that Datsun. <laughs> Four so. But there. when we got to Indiana and 50th and I was stopped at the light, my dad pulled up next to us. And my buddy, Mike, I've got... Uh, you remember uh, the old uh, Twisted Sister, I'm Not Going to Take It? Yeah. We're that song was playing, and Mike was beating that dashboard. <laughs> We're not going to take it. <laughs> and I look over, and there's my dad, and he is just red. <laughs> and he's like, you take that son of a bitch home right now. <laughs> so anyway, my dad turned around, went home, and then I got home about, I guess, 20, 25 minutes later, and he's like, where the fuck have you been? I told you to take that son of a bitch home, and I was like, I took him home. (laughs) He wasn't talking about Maya. He was talking about the car. Yeah, and that was the the Grand Prix back then. They The stock was a 400. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was a pretty long car, too. Yeah. For a two door? Yeah. That was a real long yeah, car. They were nice. I had a 73 Le Mans Sport. It was one of my favorite cars. I bought it. Um, was bought Now, it. was the Le Mans a lot like the Grand Prix at that point? Uh, yes and no. The Le Mans was always before like the GTO. Yeah. But they had um, this, was, this it was, it was, obviously, it was a two door, had bucket seats, had that long console, had the 400 V8. And Dude, dual it had exhaust that shifter on the console. Yes, it's like yeah. a you know you're stuck up your little knob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to push a button down in the middle to shift. Yeah, yeah. And I, it was blue. It was blue. The vinyl top was blue. Uh, the oh, top it had a was vinyl a dark. The the top was a little bit darker. And the vinyl top on those weren't the whole roof. It was just no, like this one was the entire. Oh, it was because yeah, the Le Mans was yeah, were, oh, like, oh, it, yeah. But they they call it the what you're talking about, the half that was called the Landau. It was yeah, a Landau the, roof. Most of the Grand Prix, yeah, it yeah. was where the back seat started. Yeah. and only went back. I think I think just about all the Grand Prix, I think, were like that. Okay. At least around, at least in during during that generation. Yeah, those things were pretty. You know, about four years ago, no oh shit, it's been longer than that. About nine years ago, I saw a seventy-two sky blue, two-tone blue Grand Prix oh. in Clovis, New Mexico. Oh yeah, two thousand dollars, eighty eighty-seven thousand miles. And I was like, wow. dude, I'm on my way. Yeah. You know, that's five hours from here. I'm like, I'm headed that way, bro. Yeah. So anyway, I go by Lubbock Mm -hmm. and pick up my dad. I'm like, hey, this is the car. And he loves the Grand Prix Mm -hmm. because he had one for so long. And so we ride over there. And on the way over there, I call the dude like two or three times. He don't answer. And I'm like, you know, he's probably busy, whatever. Yeah. So anyway, we get there. And I've now I've called him like eight or nine times and he ain't answering. We sit at a taco villa literally for like three hours, and I'm calling like yeah. every 30 minutes. Yeah. And finally, the dude answers, and he's like, hey, man, I had to come down to Berlin to get the car, and we're on our way back. So we're going to be there in about an hour, hour and a half. And I'm like, okay, cool. As long as I know, yeah. I'm golden. Yeah, you get in the car. Two and a half hours later, Oh my. He wasn't there, and he wasn't answering his phone. Again. <laughs> so me and my dad sat over there for like seven hours oh, and came back empty-handed. Wow. 
Wow. I was so pissed. It was a Grand Prix. Yeah. And it was, dude, yeah. you, you remember that blue that almost looked silver? Yeah. It was that blue. Oh, man. But it was two-tone yeah. because, like, on the hood, the hood yeah. top, it was a yeah, darker. Top of the hood, and then when you get yeah, down, yeah, yeah, over, yeah, over, yeah, over, yeah, over yeah. That, yeah. Over that crease, over that pleat, yeah. So um, it, was, it was like almost a silver blue and then almost like a, a navy blue. And that, that had to hurt. Oh, yeah, yeah. 400. And, it, I mean, dude, I saw the pictures. It looked nice. Dual exhaust. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, but you know what? I got to spend seven hours with my dad. Yeah. Well, that that makes it worth it. It definitely makes it worth it. Hey, I, I don't have my glass. I need to step away for just a second. All right. I'll sit here and play with my wiener. Ooh. Bing, ding, 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 ding. Oh, there it is. Hey, I thought you were getting your glass. You don't have to hold my wiener. <laughs> Couldn't find it if I wanted to. Oh, no, I got it right here for you. <laughs> I'm holding between my pinky and my thumb. <laughs> Couldn't find it if I wanted to. I'm back. All right. Here's what I was playing. All right, guys. So let's jump into the etiquette. Okay. We kind of went off on a little rabbit hole there. Sorry let's about that. This, let's <laughs> jump into this benchmark. A rock and roll. Uh, proper and proper lighting and cutting techniques. Let's do it. So part of it is the proper cutting is don't suck on your cigar before you cut your cigar with a house cutter. Don't ever do that. Don't do it. Uh, as far as the lighting goes, it's not really so much etiquette as it is just good knowledge mm -hmm. toast the foot yes and let me tell you this I, I, i'm not I, i'm guilty of not doing this okay but you give me those cedar sticks mm -hmm. that's the best way ever to light a cigar you know, and I've never done that. Are you I, serious? Yeah, I keep telling myself. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get some, and we'll do it on the next show. You know, they had them at the Leaf for a while. I don't know if they still do. but So all you have to do is lots of cigar boxes have mm. little cedar in them, mm -hmm. and you can just break those off and use those. Okay. But, like, have you ever lit your cigar with a wooden match? I have. Okay, so you know how nice it is to have that soft flame. Well, when you do a cedar stick... You uh, you don't have just this little bitty stick like a match. Yeah, you you got to push the button again. Okay, you got. It. But uh, but when you have that big old thick plank, mm -hmm. like the fire is that big. Yeah. So you're actually being able to light the entire tip at Once, one time. Yeah. Or the foot. Yeah. People were like, "Oh, you don't call the foot the tip. <laughs> you don't call the tip the foot." Well, you bend over, and I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. But anyway, uh, really, just on the cutting, don't don't put your cigar in your mouth. Yeah. Now I'll tell you this too: Have you, if you're in a lounge and you go in and say say you buy a fifteen to eighteen dollar cigar, you lot you you cut it, okay? You cut it mm -hmm. and you take a cold draw. Yes. And you go, son of a bitch, it's plugged. Yeah. What do you do then? How do you tell the shop this is plugged, but they might want to try it out. Make sure that you're not full of shit. Maybe you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what they do? They turn it around and take the draw from the foot. Oh, okay. That's how you, without slobbering all over right. each other, right. you know? Yeah. But uh, I have actually, I've done that several times. I've been like, hey man, take, take a draw on this. And they're like, oh, yeah, get yourself another cigar. Hmm. And most shops will let you just yeah. go get another one. Now, you're going to get the same one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not trading it in for an Opus X. You can't go from, <laughs> can't go from a factory smoke right. to an Opus X. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I've, I've, I mean, I've been fortunate. That's never happened to me. Okay. been very fortunate. But you, you smoke more cigars you've than You've never had a tight draw where you couldn't smoke it? No. Wow. Dude, I've had hundreds. I mean, I've literally I've had hundreds of that. I've had hundreds of tunnel draws. 
Now I've, I've I've had some tunnel. I've had some cigars tunnel on me from time. To I time. hate that too. Yeah, yeah. I had one the other night that was tunneling on me, and yeah. you know what? The first half of the cigar was fantastic, and then the rest of the cigar was just not enjoyable because I was fighting it the whole yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that time I had? I don't know what it was I was smoking. I was ha- I was over here. I was having trouble with it, and you said, "Oh, let me see if I can fix that for you." <laughs> And you just broke it in half and said, get another one. <laughs> okay, that's not what I thought you were going to say, but yeah, that yeah. happened. And I thought, because you said, let, let me fix that, that for wasn't you. Wasn't that a Churchill? I don't know. Because it was long, I and know. I just held it up in front of you, and I just <laughs> broke it in half. I don't know what it was. And I was like, now go get another cigar. But I'm not smoking that but shit. But I, remember, but I remember thinking, oh, what's he going to do to fix that? And then I saw, get another one. Like, we're not dicking around. And by the way, thank you. Cheers, bro. (laughs) Yeah, you know, here's the thing. Cigar smoking is about your experience. It should be an enjoyable experience. Exactly. If you are not enjoying that cigar, why are you messing with it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now there are some occasions where I give it the old, what do you call it? The old college try. Mm Mm-hmm. I'd think about that for a minute, folks, because I only went to college for one semester. But uh, as did I. But I had a great time. As as did I. Man, I had a good time. As did People I. People are like, you regret not finishing? I'm like, no, no I regret no. not continuing that first semester. <laughs> <laughs> Once I found out all the women were hanging out at the UC, I quit going to class. There you were. I was like, uh, hey, I got a. Oh, you're going to hang out? Yeah, I, I, I ain't got a class. <laughs> I got, ooh, man. I was like Romeo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Been there. <laughs> and I had a girlfriend. <laughs> the worst ever. Let me not, tell you, not been there. Let me tell you this. So there was a girl in my music class. I don't even remember her name. But you know how you do the old googly eye from across the room? Mm. And, you know, you're kind of like, Shaking your tail feather if you're a bird, being like, hey, look at what I'm doing, you know? What You're on this tail feather thing tonight. What's that all about? I'll play you a song later. You'll get it. <laughs> but anyway. I'm scared. You should be. I yeah, know. Uh, we started talking, and I said, hey. Um, That's talking. You are let me take you out tonight. And she's like, sure, let's do Or not tonight, tomorrow night. Yeah. Because it was Saturday. Yeah. And so... This was my first date with a college girl. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exciting. And my girlfriend, my girlfriend was like two years younger than me. Oh. So she had just graduated high school. Yeah. And yeah, I started college late, guys. If you're doing the math, follow along. <laughs> but uh have a calculator. Anyway, here. I had we used to hang out at this bar called Speeds. And they served underage all day, every day. You know what I mean? It was like, and you know what our drink was back then when we were like 19 was kamikazes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's strong. Mm-hmm. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. And you give a 19 year old about five or six of those. He's hammered. Yeah. <laughs> so we got the recipe and you, you, have you met my cousin, Mark? Yeah, uh, Albany? No. No. That's Randy. I've met him then. Okay, so Mark was with me, and so we went out to the strip and bought you underage, we could buy everywhere, okay? But uh we went and bought the I think it was vodka and uh what's the green grenadine? No what's the I, green shit? You're a former bartender. Midori? No, no, it's no not way. alcohol. It's like part of a mixer. What's the green right. shit? Sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. Okay. So it was sweet and sour. I remember, I'm colorblind. Okay, well, it was, fi- oh, yeah, I forgot. 50 50. It was vodka and sweet and sour. And then you just put in a couple of dashes of the grenadine. That's a kamikaze. Okay. And so we made a gallon. <laughs> Of course you And put it in a jug. Of course you did. (laughs) And we're just passing around this milk jug (laughs) with kamikazes. Of course. (laughs) And so anyway, at some point during the night, we went down the speeds. It was a billiards parlor. Mm -hmm. And they probably had like 16 tables. And so anyway, I'm with this chick and my cousin Mark's tagging along. And I'm like, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. So I go to the bathroom. I'm in there just whizzing, you know, enjoying myself. And I'm thinking, 
maybe I'm going to get lucky tonight. And so anyway, I open the door and there's my girlfriend and my date. Oh, my. <laughs> Standing side by side and they look pissed. Oh my, my. And I was like, hey. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, I yeah. started getting it from both barrels. Bop, 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 yeah. bop, bop, bop. yeah. So I shut the door. <laughs> it's like, they can't come in here. I'm safe. Did, did they come in? Nope. Okay. And uh, I outweighed them. <laughs> About an hour and a half. That's what it took. I could stay in there all night because if I got to go, I'm in the room already. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting on the shitter yeah. with my jeans on. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, it's a chair. But uh, yeah, that was that was a uh, that was an experience. When you open the door and see your girlfriend and your date and the side chick, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't recommend you doing that, folks. If you're young and dumb or old and stupid, yeah. don't don't do, do that. that. I was young and dumb. Yeah. Don't be old and stupid. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Wow. All right, so let's jump into uh, pacing and the enjoyment. So pacing is, what that means is don't, it's not a race to smoke your cigar. That's true. Are you getting to where you're taking Uh, longer? Yeah, yeah, I am. You notice Hatch has been since we got on her about it. Because, like, she smokes two to one to me. Yeah. But I used to smoke like that. It's very easy to do, Mm -hmm. but I promise you when you like intentionally slow down, make it intentional. Yes. You, 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 it will improve your experience so much. A hundred percent. Like, like you don't even know. Like I didn't know Mm -hmm. when people were like, oh man, you're smoking them fast. I was like, hell yeah, I do. (laughs) I was kind of proud. So, you know, what I had to do was start. I had to start putting my cigar down. See, I don't hold them. Yeah, if I if I hold into my hand, I'm going to keep smoking it. So I had to start putting mine down, put in the ashtray. So let me let me ask you this. Um, So yeah, respect the cigar uh, and respect the smoking process. But we're not down that far, bro. Where were we? We're up to we were ash management and enjoyment. Okay, well. Good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Following along. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back. I'm Folks, back. I'm actually writing out a damn script for the show now. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Go, Rob. But uh, so people are like, well, what do I do to slow down? Okay. There's lots of different techniques because we all have a routine of mm-hmm. how we smoke. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when you have a cigar this size or larger, look at this. Like, when you get ready to start puffing on it, how many puffs do you take? Two to three. Two to three. Two to three. I'm 99% of the time a three puffer. Yeah. But what I've learned is, like when I'm smoking a Lancero or a uh, five by 42, mm-hmm. you can't puff on it three times. Yeah. Because it's so small, yeah. it's going to get so hot yeah. that it starts ruining the flavor of the cigar. Yeah. So on that, I'm a one or two puffer. Now, if I'm doing a one puff, Mm -hmm. it's a long Mm -hmm. puff. You know what I mean? I'm Mm -hmm. trying to get the most out of that Mm -hmm. one puff. If it's a two, it's a medium puff, medium puff. But you cannot do three. But so if you are doing a three puff or four puff on every size Vitola that you're smoking, that's an easy way to slow down your roll. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, all right, we'll start taking two puffs yeah. instead of three. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, an yeah, easy yeah, one. Yeah, that does. That makes sense. That does make sense. All right, what's the next one? Ash management. You got any wisdom on that? So um let it let the ash build up some for starters. Let the ash build up some. And, and you know, I was horrible at that at one time. Yeah. I mean, I constantly was tapping my ash. Mm-hmm. Did you do that? Yeah, I, I did. So, you know, I 10 years before I ever started smoking cigars, I smoked cigarettes for mm-hmm. 24 years. And you just constantly are yeah. ashing a yeah. cigarette. Yeah. And so when I started smoking cigars, I kept doing that. But look at that ash right there. Nice like, ash. like it's not 
it's probably what quarter of an inch yes but mm-hmm. that ash insulates the heat of yeah. the cherry right. on your cigar and it regulates how it burns mm-hmm. if you're constantly taking the ash off of your cigar it's getting too hot yeah. Because every time you puff in, the air is directly hitting the cherry. So now tell people, what is what, what do you consider to be the cherry of the cigar? The part that looks like it's burning like an anus on fire that has a hemorrhoid. I should not have asked. <laughs> As the words were coming out of my mouth, I thought, this is a bad question. <laughs> Maybe I should have made some yeah. shit up. <laughs> So no, but you know what I'm you know what yeah. the cherry is. Yeah. It's the glowing red hot yeah. part. Yeah. So uh remember so, this is 101. So now, some now, people also, don't know. yeah, I get it. And then also, how do you put a cigar out? Don't show me tell when I'm no, when I'm finished, I lay it in the ashtray gently. I don't stub it out. I just lay it gently in the ashtray. I think if you st- smash your cigar down to put it out then you should have to like have your hands cuffed to the wall and everybody in the lounge gets to punch you in the face i agree you know what i mean i agree because that is the most outrageous thing you could do and here's the thing about a cigar you have that ash on there when I'm done with the cigar, mm-hmm. I normally just lay it just like that. I'm done. Now, if I smoke it down to the nub and I'm done, I lay it in the ashtray. Yeah. But normally, my cigar sometimes goes out when I lay it there. Yeah. Sometimes I relight it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm done. Yeah. And so just be conscious of what you're doing because mm-hmm. smashing a cigar out like an old cigarette it's offensive, yeah. and it's not just offensive because we see you doing it. When you smash that cigar, it smokes mm-hmm. three times as much as if you just laid it right mm-hmm. there. You see how much you can't even hardly see that that's mm-hmm. smoking. But I promise you, if you smash this yeah, down, it's smoke. It's like, yeah. and yeah. you know Robert up at the Leaf, that dude smashed out a twenty-two dollar cigar halfway through. I heard about. Yeah, and it was his uh, employee free cigar of the day. I'm like, I would have kicked your ass if I was Jay. <laughs> yeah. But that's me. <laughs> that's why I'm not Jay. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. all right, guys, let's move on to the next one. Respect the cigar. That, I mean, there's so much to talk about on that. Mm-hmm. Because you can't just put, you you go into a cigar shop and buy three cigars. Do you need to drive home or wherever it is that you're going and have them on your dashboard? No. Your 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 seat, you don't need to be laying it on the seat nope. with just by itself. It damn sure shouldn't be in the floorboard. Yeah. <laughs> but I've had them there. Yeah. I even smoked one when it was there and wow, that was a bad idea, folks. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how long that cigar's been there. <laughs> Apparently, it had been there for a while. Yeah. Also, about ashes. Instead of, like, tapping or thumping, I just put it on the edge and roll. So that's what I was going to ask you. Do you thump it or do you just kind of <laughs> roll it off? I roll it off. How do you do it? I, I Well, I used to thump it now. I used to thump it, too. The time I spent with you, I've learned to just kind of roll it off. I mean, look, I just rolled that off. Mm-hmm. So you're not losing all of the ash. That's right. So That's anyway, right. so respect the cigar. Mm-hmm. Respect it. Put it in. Hopefully you have it in a freaking bag. If you buy three or more cigars and they don't offer to put it in a bag, ask for a bag. Yes, yes definitely. And some cigar shops will even throw in a free Bovetta pack. Mm-hmm. I would, you know what I mean? Even if they don't offer it, I'd be like, hey, man, can I get a Bovetta pack in there? Yeah. And if the, if you have to buy one. Buy one. What, a dollar? You don't know how long it's going to be until you get, especially if you don't know how long it's going to be until you get home to your, if you, hopefully you have a humidor. Well, maybe you're not going straight home. Yeah, that's right. And so you don't need it just out there breathing the air. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not human. Mm -hmm. So then on the flip side of that, once you get it home, taking care of your cigar means having it properly humidified Humidified. case elegance baby oh yeah you need a freaking humidor look in the show notes you can save 10 percent by 
using our link. They don't give that 10% off to anybody else. There is, oh, I, you know, I can't say enough good things about it. Everybody Elegance. associated with Cigar Talk has a Case Elegance humidor. Yes. And several have more than one. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> and Hatch, Hatch, Hatch has is three. guilty as charged. Yeah. And I she like, loves them. Uh, I've only got three. Yeah. I've got the two there, mm-hmm. and then I've got the jar. Yeah. I love the jar. That jar, that jar is fantastic. I really do like it. Yeah. I really do. So all I, all I would, full disclaimer, um, in terms of case elegance, all I have currently are the uh, are the travel cases, but that. That's the uh, Lucia? No, no. Uh, something like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, close uh, enough. The travel case. Leander. Yeah. But, but, but. No, no, not the travel case. I'm talking about the one you're talking about where it has the door. Yeah. yeah. You like that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm getting it. That, that's going to be my birthday. Last time I, myself. I, I just spoke the name of it, and I was like, dude's got chub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, for, my, for, my, for my birthday this year, I'm, gonna, I'm getting one of those. Okay, cool. Yeah gonna do those it. are mm-hmm. i mean we know what yeah. they make huh? michael and, we know, and, his team. and we and we know the team oh michael and his team are doing great stuff i they mean a fantastic you, product the customer service when when and we've told this a hundred times if you're going to sponsor this show we got to love your product but we also have to love your company and by your company we mean your team yes how do you treat people yes and they go above and beyond, and that's how they become a sponsor. We love what Case Elegance does. Michael, if you're listening, again, thank you. Thank I you, brother. I texted this morning. Thank I said, hey, man, are you in London at like 5.55? No, no, it was at 3.55, but it was like 6.55 their time. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yep. All right. Well, he's in London. All right. Yeah, I can't wait for him to get back. We're going to have him on the show next week, I believe. Good deal. Either next week or the week after. Good deal. So I wanted to talk to him about PCA. You know, this was a big PCA for them. Yes. So I'm excited to hear what they got. Uh, Also about protecting your cigars. You get them home, make sure they're humidified. That's a basic 101. Yes, it is. Uh, Also, though, like cellophane. You you, Let's say you come home with two boxes of cigars. You're going to throw them down in your humidor. Do you take the cellophane off or do you leave the cellophane on? I leave the cellophane on. And why do you do that? Uh, well, a couple of reasons. One, it's it's just easier because I can just put them in the humidor. And also, and well, no, just one. I leave the cellophane on because it's easier. I can just put them in the humidor. Okay. Uh, and I know there's some people that like, we well, want the cellophane on because it's going to change the flavor if I take the cellophane off, if, if, if there's other cigars in there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, because so cell- let me give the you my, breathes. Let me give you. So let me give you my opinion on it. I'm waiting for it. Come on. So back in the day when I used to post a million posts a day on social media, mm-hmm. every box of cigars I got, I took them all out of the cellophane and I stacked them in the humidor where they were all facing straight, straight up. You know, everything was perfect. Yes. But it was because I was doing photo ops. Yeah. Now I'd never take them out of cellophane. Yeah. Because if your cigar needs humidity, mm-hmm. the cellophane just sucks it right through. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hurt your cigar. There you go. Basically, for me, cellophane is put on your cigar to protect it in transit. Right. It's to protect it until you get it home. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to take it off when you get it home, don't take it off. Yeah. It's not doing you any favors by being on. Yep. Once you get it in your possession at home, how you treat it, it's all on you. Yes. And so I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm not taking all those off, dude. Yeah. I used I used to throw away hundreds of those. Yeah. I still do, but yeah. now it's onesies and twosies. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, or or threesies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, that's going to wrap it up for this uh, edition of the Cigar Etiquette 101. We just want to throw a few basics out there for you. I know some of you are so amazingly badass that you don't need to hear those. So I appreciate if you listen to them. If you didn't, I completely understand. And hopefully some of you learn something or at least have something else. I learn something every day. Yes, you do. And then you forget it. Yep, that's true. That's why I learn something every day. (laughs) My wife's like, I told you that three days ago. It's new now. (laughs) My wife told me. 
It must be amazing to wake up to a new day every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I said? It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Here we go into the next one. Exploring rare and limited cigars. Come on with it. So, like, do you smoke much rare or limited editions? Because I, I don't think you Not do. too often. No, not too often. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, when you look at the big picture, I don't either. Yeah. Like, I do smoke them, mm -hmm. but like, and, but then everything is, what do you call it? Uh, everything is what? Uh, relative. Yes. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. So, what is a rare or special cigar to you? Is like, might not be special to somebody else. That's right. Yeah. That's it's true. like, like for a lot of guys, Eagle Rare is special as it can be. For yeah. me, it's not special at all. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good bourbon. Yeah. And at the MSRP price, it's a great bourbon. Mm -hmm. But the fact that when nobody could get it and I got nine bottles in one year, I got burnt out on it. Yeah. I was like, this isn't near as good as I thought it was. Yeah. And so with cigars, it's the same way. Mm -hmm. So, like, I enjoy some of the limited editions. And, like, one of the best ones I had was one of the ones that Sean gave me, which was, you know, the uh, Stillwell from Zaka? I haven't had that yet. I've heard okay, good things so, about it. But the one he gave me is not the one they have in the shop. Oh. It was a holiday edition. Oh, my. So think this. Shiner Bach festive season whatever the christmas season mm -hmm. is you know what holiday season mm -hmm. is that what it is yeah you know what i'm talking about yes. but you get those like holiday flavors yeah. well that cigar is like that Ooh. and it was actually fantastic Ooh. like i would not have thought that i would enjoy that if you told me the notes before i smoked it but lighten it up i was like holy shit this is completely way off from anything that I would normally enjoy. Yeah. And I enjoyed the shit out of it. Yeah. Well, you know, we've talked about this. Sean knows some good things about virtually everything, especially when it comes I'd to I'd say he knows a whole lot of things yeah. about things that we like. Yeah. yeah, he does. All right, guys, let's get on to it. So on the rare or limited edition cigars, like, I think it all starts with two different cigar brands. You got the Padron 1926, Ooh, Family yeah. Reserve, Ooh, yes. 50th anniversary. Oh, yes. 90th anniversary. Yes. You know, it's like all those cigars are, they're not rare, they're not limited, but they're special. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you, you, I got to put all of the Padron at a 1926 and up in that category. Yeah. Another category I got to go with is Opus X. Yes. I mean, what they did, what they started by growing tobacco in a field that was reserved only for the best of the best. Like, I don't know if any other company has done that. Yeah. Maybe there is. I don't know. But all I do know is that Fuente was like, <clears throat> this is has been a very special plot of land, yeah. and we will only grow Opus here. Oh, wow. And so the regular Opus, I'm a fan. Now, Melanie Cisco Kid gave me a few Opus, mm -hmm. and one of them was the uh, Lancero. You know I'm not a big Lancero guy, but holy shit, that cigar was good. <laughs> wow. And so, thank you, Melanie. That was, a, I mean, that was a great gift. Uh, she gave me one, too, when, when she was here. Yeah. And I looked forward to smoking it with her when we were at TPE, and I never saw her. So, I so had smoked it on my Me own. and Tim had the pleasure to hang out with her and Tom Friday night at the Resort World Lounge, mm -hmm. and we literally just sat there and had drinks and cigars all night and just shot the shit. That's, good night. that's, a, that's a good night. It's a good night. In fact, I created a game. You want to know what the game was? Probably not, but I think you're going to tell me anyway. It was 
Hey, you see that dude right there walking around with a woman? Is that his girlfriend or is that a hooker? <sighs> that was a fun game. Yeah. Okay. It was like, yep, definitely a hooker. <laughs> Look at that dude. He's ugly as shit. You see that? Come on. <laughs> You can tell by his clothes he's got money, but he's still ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that dude's with a hooker. <laughs> and then there were some guys who was like, yep, that's this is definitely his girlfriend. <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't know they let homely people like that come into Vegas. Rob, Rob, Rob. Oh, it was just a fun game. Yeah. I'll tell you what was funny, though, was how shocked Melanie was <laughs> by our answers. <laughs> I mean, she was like, y'all are so mean. I was like, no, we're just calling them the way we see them. <laughs> All right, let's jump on to the next one. So we've got the Fuente Opus X. We've got the Padron. Mm -hmm. Here's a brand that I normally don't get to smoke very often. It's rare. Yes. But they do have some cigars that I absolutely love. And the brand of this cigar is Davidoff. Mm. You've had a few Davidoff, I know, because I've given you yes. some. The only only ones I've had. And those were the, uh, I believe they were the Double Perfecto Os Oscuro. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those were fantastic. They were. Now. You had some problems with yours. Well, the first one I had no problems. Mm -hmm. The second one. And you know what? That's what I get for smoking two in one night. <laughs> but the second one, about halfway through, it just blew up. It looked like someone had put a gag uh, load in the side of my cigar. It just blew up. And I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to smoke you, motherfucker. I'm going to smoke you. You ain't getting rid of me. I'm a, soldier. I, I'm a soldier through I, this one. I smoked the whole thing, and it was just, it looked like a joke. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I enjoyed the shit out of the entire cigar. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you got four of them for $84. Yeah. I don't know what that was. That $21 a piece? Oh my God, and yeah. I was like... I'm smoking. I'm smoking you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming for I you. Pay for this. I'm going through. You know how I am. I'm cheap. Yeah. So anyway, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we are going to do the showcase showdown. Showcase showdown. I don't need no destination. I got everywhere to go. I'm a walking invitation. I'm the daughter of the mother road. When I need. Distraction when the world is closing in. Hey, stranger, where are you headed? Would you like to let the games begin? And he said, I Jump on it, cause I don't wanna be late for Thunder Road. And I said, Man, ready, ready, Hey, guys, thanks for hanging through that second break. Normally, we don't take two, but tonight we've had enough to drink that we need another break. So, <laughs> you. Hey, it's time for the showcase showdown. All right, I'm ready. You want to go? Or you want me to start? Oh well, why don't you start? All right, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start out with the Nestor Miranda, 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 Special Selection Habano, manufactured at My Father's Cigars. You know, if they're making your cigars, they're gonna be good cigars. They're gonna be good. The wrapper is a Maduro. The binder is Nicaraguan, and the filler is a combination of Nicaragua, Honduras, and Dominican Republic. Oh, that's a lot of flavor. That's a concert right there. It really is. So, if you haven't tried the Nestor Mirando, <laughs> Miranda, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> I'm glad you're home. We we did we did a few drinks while we were on break. Anyway, the next one you guys have heard of because it's been in my top three on whatever we did before. <laughs> but hooting keep, and, Rob, keep it together. Hooting and Young 2020. I knew you're going to do that. And you know what's funny is when I went to the website to look up the information from mm -hmm. the cigar, so you folks at home would know exactly what this cigar is. I was like. Well, this is on the band. It's spelled out 2020 mm -hmm. on the website. It's two zero two zero. And it says uh special hour or something. Okay. Something like that. But anyway, I was like, it's not 2020. <laughs> and then I was like, 
Well, I guess kind of. <laughs> kind of. It is 2020, <laughs> but it's not spelled out long form in the alphabetical letters. Okay. So anyway, there's that. My next one was a gift from uh, Carlos. Julio. The Placencia Reserve 1898. Mm. You had one of those? mm it's a powerhouse. Oh, powerhouse. Oh, damn. Smooth. Okay. But it's full flavored, okay. full bodied. All right. And so the cigar is actually a 4.75 inch by 52 ring gauge box press. Ooh. Really nice. Uh, the wrapper is Nicaraguan, binder Nicaraguan, and filler Nicaraguan. It says the strength is medium to full. But when you get into that final third, it, there ain't no medium. It's just full. Full. And uh, it's, the flavor complex, I mean, it's has quite a bit of complexity because of the three different areas that they pulled the filler from. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- to me, that's amazing. Like, yeah. I think more people should go out on a limb and try some of that. Yeah. But anyway, hats off to Placencia. They've got a badass cigar, and so do Hooten and Young and Nestor Miranda. Oh, you said it right that time. Third time's charm. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. That was like six. (laughs) But yeah, I'm trying to help you here. Thank you. Okay. So I would call all of my choices this week medium to full. And (laughs) medium to full, folks. Medium to full. Go ahead. Go ahead. For me, they're more medium. I I just haven't found that much that I consider to be really full strength. You know, I mean, I just, I don't know. But, you know. Have you tried the My Father's Lee Bijou? Uh, I'm going to go back and try it again. That's how about the uh, Partagas Black? Okay, that was full. That was full. Well, no, I'm saying when yeah. I when I want to smoke a full yeah. bodied, full yeah. just like I'm going to kick your ball sack mm-hmm. in. Those are the cigars that I look for. It's like you know what? I know I'm going to be drinking some high yeah. proof stuff mm-hmm. tonight. I want to get a a, a full bodied cigar. Yeah, and so. Those two cigars, and then there's other ones. How about the uh, Roma Craft? Uh, you know, it's the, the the genetic deformity in the uh, I've not Neanderthal. Tried. I've not. I, I have not tried the that. Orange Band. Yeah, I have not tried that one. Those are full body. You know, I don't smoke a lot of Roma Crafts. They make great cigars. Yeah, but man, those bands just <laughs> wear me out. You know, you you got to go through so much to get the band off. Just think about this. And then there's another band. Yeah, but think about this. In the seventies, think about how the rubber band man felt. Yeah, well, he was all about the band. You remember? Hand me that. that was hey guys, that. yeah. And so you didn't know at home. I've been drinking this. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Balcones True Blue Cask Strength Single Barrel. And what's the proof on that? One eighteen, which explains a lot about Rob. Right? It's now. good. It's good. I'm gonna give it a shot here. It's like, good. I cleanse this glass with some water. Let me bless it for you. No. Okay. No. And we're gonna. <laughs> no. Fifty Hail Marys to you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, my friend. Have it back. Mm. Put it on the coaster. I was listening to a little Bill Burr. Woo! Hello. Right. I just got a. It says hello to you. <laughs> Wow. I think it's delicious. I haven't even tasted it yet. Yeah, me neither. I want my third glass, but I ain't tasted shit. I just been like, whoa. <laughs> wow. No, it's good. Yeah. That ooh, yeah. I mean that it, actually it's, it, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's I, it's I get full yeah. right out the gate. Yes, it is. And let me just tell you, on your second and third sip, you'll be like, Okay, I can see where we're going now. Not have more than three. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of bourbons that like pick you up like a rag doll on the first sip the second one they're lowing you into a cradle yeah wow yeah this is different yeah this is it's good it's like, it's it's rock my baby we, you know we were talking earlier about complexities about cigars Ew, the wind blows stop stop it now <laughs> but this is yeah this is a lot of this is for 15 dollars you can find yourself some hoes that's a redneck song. Like I said, I would call this uh, my choices this week were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's Toro get Tour, medium to full. Uh, first one, unfortunately or fortunately, proves again how 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 much we are in tune. Hootie Young, twenty twenty. Oh, nice. Oh, my. 
Sam, gave, when I got back in town Wednesday, you know, we had this thing. You know, Sam gave town. me one. Yeah. And then I went to the shop and bought one. Yeah. And, I mean, both of them were lights out oh, good. Man, it was incredible. Cigar. Like, you know, sometimes you smoke one and you think it's going to be good mm-hmm. just from now on. Yeah. And about two or three, four later, you're like, I, what, what, what did I see in this yeah. cigar? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I got, what do you call that? Catfish. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, my, I, I haven't smoked another one. I got back in town Wednesday. Went have you straight had the, the white leaf. man? I have not. The only Hoot and Young I've I had. the gothic something. The only Hoot and Young I've had was that 2020. So whenever 2020 I see collection. the name Hoot and Young, I, for some reason, I just want to be like, Hoot and Nanny. I don't think they would like that. I'm though. not surprised. Wow. Hoot and Nanny. That's got some punch. It does have some punch. But do you get even more flavors on your yeah. second go around? Yeah. Yes. Wait until you teabag that glass with that bourbon okay. in there. <laughs> bloop, bloop. Settle, settle, <laughs> Rob, settle down. Once again, I remind you, people I know might be listening to this show hey. for the first and only time. <laughs> when is their first yeah. and is their last? Yeah. But no, this, it, this man, that was. Hey, if you're a friend of Larry's listening to this show, we appreciate you for this one time. <laughs> No, it, 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 man, that was like it was a great cigar. It's smooth, has a complex profile. It's and, bold, and it's a plus. Yeah, it's, it's not bold. a medium. It's a medium plus. It, it was bold, but not overwhelming, and it was just delicious. I smoked that cigar, and I just kept thinking, "Ooh, this is what are you doing over there?" Anyway, next one, uh, the Punch Knuckle Buster Habano. Dude, I haven't had one of those in years. Uh, it had that oily Ecuadorian Habano sun-grown wrapper, uh, and it has Honduran and, and, and Nicaraguan filler. It, it it looks good. It tastes even better. And it smokes good. Yes, 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 yes. So does. let me tell you, we were on the show one night, and uh, Sam was with us, and I was like, you remember those uh, chopsticks? Yeah. Ch- chop suey? Yeah, those from Punch. They had a and he was like, oh, man, I got one in my bag. And I was like, okay, cool. Because you know what? When I smoked it the first time, I didn't care for it. Mm-hmm. But then I smoked the one he gave me, and I was like, you go back. that's a good cigar. Yeah, yeah. And then he brought me two more. Mm-mm. I smoked both of them, son of a bitches. They were good. Probably at the same time. Well, yeah. one of them was orally. <laughs> puff, puff. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard pass for me. <laughs> it, it, it it's kind of full flavored, but it's smooth looking, and it tastes even better. Let me ask you this: Have you ever smoked a cigar that was like super powerful, but not smooth at all? Yeah, can't remember what it was, and I wish I could, so I'd never smoke it again. Trust me, you'll never smoke it again. No, Let me tell you something. I might remember if I. So see it. I remember when I first got into cigar smoking. Man, I, I mean, I jumped right in. I was smoking right out the gate like five cigars a day. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm an overachiever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I was buying cigars online, like the cheapest cheap I could find. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I would buy these bundles of Victor Sinclair's Ooh. Bamboo. Ooh. And I thought they were the shit. Mm-hmm. They were strong as all get out. I mean, like, you'd be like green and shit by the time you finish this cigar. You know what I mean? But you're like, oh, that's a strong cigar right there. You know what I mean? It's like you thought that was, I was badass. And then, like, I don't know, three, four years later, somebody had one and I smoked it. And I was like, yeah, that's not for me, dude. (laughs) I said in the ashtray after two puffs. I was like. Yeah, that's not for me. Let it let it burn out quietly <laughs> on its own. <laughs> but that's how your palate develops. I mean, and I don't, I don't recommend that everybody who's news does what I did, but we all have a journey. Yeah. And some paths are easier than others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what makes paths a lot easier? Asking questions. Yeah. To those guys that know what's going mm-hmm. on. You know what I mean? We're all happy to share with you what questions you may have. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've helped a lot of guys over the years that email me questions that are random. I'm like, oh, yeah. And as an experienced cigar smoker, you don't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's yeah. like, no, you don't shit in the urinal that's for the stand up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. I got to get out of here. All right. And the hey, last. Is that your three? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. That was. Cute. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The last one was a Monte Cristo Espada Habano. Oh. Yeah. Woo. Ooh. Habano rapper from 2010 from Jalapa, Nicaragua. Is it Jalapa or, ja- or Jalapa? I think it's Jalapa. Okay. Jalapa, Nicaragua. Belinda Phyllis from Halaka. I, I don't know if I'm saying this Halaka. right. Halaka. <laughs> Halapa. You sound like Fozzie the Bear over there. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Ometepe and Condega. Ometepe, yeah. Ometepe and Condega. Yeah, oh, oh, dude, if you got Ometepe and Jalapa tobacco in your cigar, you know people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are two of the hardest tobaccos to get. Well, I will just tell you. Monte Cristo's got connections. That is a cigar to try. Oh, 100%. It is, it, I mean, the, the flavor there, it, it's, it's, oh. <laughs> I'd love the Habano yeah. edition and the Maduro edition. Yeah. Well, it's called the Oscuro. Yeah. But those two cigars, woo, Monte Cristo knocked it out. Mm-hmm. And the 1935 anniversary. Mm. Woo. <sighs> I haven't had any of those while I'm feeling the itch. Yeah. Well, we smoked them all. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. It was a great, those, man, those cigars. So I like, I like this one, but those you had? Oh, well, the Oscuro blended by A.J. Fernandez is lights out. And you pay attention. You can find them son of a bitches on sale. Okay. I paid four fifty a stick for them, and crazy. in the retail they're about sixteen to eighteen. It was crazy, man. It was crazy because those were some delicious, delicious cigars. Cheers. Let's yeah. cheer on that. Let's cheer on that. All yes. right. Hey, is that it? Uh, that that was three. That's All it. All right. Well, until next time, guys. Life is short. Smoke with a friend. Or anybody. Yeah. <laughs> or anybody. Happy trails to you. He's fine. the clouds when we're together just sing a song and think about sunny weather happy trails to you till we meet again